often in Silverstone, and mm -hmm. particularly a good afternoon to our Year 2 boys and girls and their mm -hmm. families, and to our Year 2 teachers. This afternoon I'm reading Stella Luna, which is one of the, uh, the books that our students in Year 2 study and do some work around. Uh, so I'll post this on Facebook, but I'll also put it on YouTube, on the Silkstone YouTube channel as well. So, Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon. In a warm and sultry forest, far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby. Oh, how mother bat loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned each night. Mother Bat would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast as she flew out to search for food. One night as Mother Bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful bird swooped down upon the bats. Dodging and shrieking, Mother Bat tried to escape. But the owl struck again and again, knocking Stella Luna into the air. Her baby wings were as limp and useless as wet paper. Down, down she went, faster and faster, into the forest below. The dark, leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. One twig was small enough for Stella Luna's feet. Wrapping her wings about her, she clutched the thin branch, trembling with cold and fear. Mother, Stella Luna squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the baby bat could hold on no longer. Down, down again, she dropped. Flump. Stella Luna landed headfirst in a soft, downy nest, startling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna quickly clambered from the nest and hung out of sight below it. She listened to the babble of the three birds. What was that? cried Flap. I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet, chirped Flitter. Shh, here comes Mama, hissed Pip. Many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawly things that Mama Bird brought home. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest, closed her eyes and opened her mouth. Plop, in dropped a big green grasshopper. Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day and slept at night. She ate bugs even though they tasted awful. Her bat ways were quickly disappearing. Except for one thing, Stella Luna still liked to sleep, hanging by her feet. Once when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. When Mama Bird came home, she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. Eek, she cried. Get up here this instant. You're going to fall and break your necks. The birds clambered back into the nest, but Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. You are teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into this nest unless you promise to obey all the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised. She ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night and she didn't hang by her feet. Stella Luna behaved as a good bird should. All the babies grew quickly. Soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, Flap and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too.
Pip, Flitter and Flap landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same. How embarrassing. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself, then no one will see how clumsy I am. The next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours, exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We'd better go home or we'll get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went home without her. All alone, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed. So she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sound of wings coming near her. Hey, a loud voice called. Why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down. You are, Stella Luna said. Ah, but you're a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You are hanging by your thumbs, so that makes you upside down, the creature said. I'm a bat. I am hanging by my feet. That makes me the right way up. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird, maybe, but not for a bat. More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her story. <laughs> you ate bugs, stuttered one. You slept at night, gasped another. How very strange, they all murmured. Wait, wait, let me look at this child. A bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she asked. Sniffing Stella Luna's fur, she whispered, You are Stella Luna. You are my baby. You escaped the owl, cried Stella Luna. You survived. Yes, said Mother Bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. But it's night time, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark or we will crash into trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in the dark. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as though rays of light shone through her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. Soon the bats found a mango tree and Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could hold. I'll never eat another bug as long as I live, she cheered. Stella Luna and she stuffed herself full. I must tell Pip, Flitter and Flap. The next day Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, let's go, agreed Pip. They hang by their feet and they fly at night and they eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna explained to the birds on the way. As the birds flew among the bats, Flap said, I feel upside down here. So the birds hung by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We will fly at night. When night, when night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, Flitter and Flap leapt from tree to tree to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, howled Flitter. Aye, shrieked Flap. They're going to crash, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. 
Stella Luna swooped about, grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted them to the tree and the birds grasped a branch. Stella Luna hung from the limb above them. We're safe, said Stella Luna, then she sighed. Ah, I wish you could see in the dark too. We wish you could land on your feet, Flitter replied. Pip and Flap nodded. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we be so different and feel so alike, mused Flitter. And how can we feel so different and be so much alike, wondered Pip. I think this is quite the mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna, but we're friends and that's a fact. And that's the story of Stella Luna, boys and girls. Now in the, in the, in the end of this book, there's some bat notes. <clears throat> So I'll read the bat notes for you, some interesting information about bats. Of the nearly 4,000 species of mammals on Earth, almost a quarter are bats, the only mammals that are capable of powered flight. The scientific name for bats is Chiroptera, or hand wing, because the skeleton that supports the wing is composed of the animal's elongated finger bones. The majority of bats are classified as Microchiroptera, small hand wing, Nearly 800 varieties fill special niches in every climate around the world, except for the polar zones. The lifestyles and food preferences of Microchiroptera vary widely. Many eat insects, while others catch fish, amphibians and reptiles. Finally, finally there is the famous vampire, of which there are only three species, living in Mexico to Argentina. The vampire's victims are mostly domestic cattle and native mammals and birds. The other 170 or so species of bats are the fruit bats, otherwise known as megachiroptera or large handwing. We see lots of those in southeast Queensland. I see them flying over my house every night virtually. As their name implies, these are the largest bats, some types boasting wingspans of 1.8 meters. Fruit bats generally have long muzzles, large eyes, pointy ears and furry bodies, which is why they are often called flying foxes. Unlike the microchiroptera, who travel by echolocation, fruit bats depend on their keen vision and sense of smell to navigate. They live in tropical and subtropical climates that provide year-round supplies of their favourite fruit, flowers and nectar. Some fruit bats, as they forage for nectar, are responsible for pollination of many types of night blooming trees and plants. Others eat whole seeds, fruits and all, and distribute them over the forest floor in their droppings. Regeneration of tropical forests greatly depends on the bats. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the story and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about bats. Next time you're out at night time, see if you can spy some fruit bats uh, flying across the night sky. They're quite a sight. Have a good evening, everybody. Talk to you soon.